study coronaviruses for a living. And uh, this is a uh, uh, question that's coming from Nikki, and it was in response to another question that uh, we've just answered. And so the question was, yeah, what, what happened with Sweden? Uh, didn't they master the coronavirus without uh, taking any precautions? And I guess the answer is kind of yes and no, but uh, yeah, there's more to it maybe than uh, um, at first glance there might appear to be. So what we've got here, this is the financialtimes.com, uh, and I've set it to uh, just look at deaths for the moment. And I've set it, we can look in raw numbers, but some of these uh, places we're comparing are rather small uh, compared to other ones. And so it's better, I think, to show them in per million. The one nice thing about deaths is that this is a fairly accurate count. I mean, it's, it's going to be an undercount in every place, but it's less of an undercount than the case numbers. The case numbers were very badly undercounted when we were doing a bad job on uh, testing. So here you can see the um, yeah three countries that did not do a great job um, with this, uh, being the United States, which has the most cases uh, total, I think, cumulatively in the world. But if we're talking the most daily cases, I think India is still uh, ahead of the US, although they're getting a little better. But look in terms of proportionate uh, damage. Yeah, the UK, where they were taking a kind of a say one thing and do another approach, uh, saying, oh yeah, we take this really seriously, but then not really doing anything. Sweden, where there was a particular government minister um, who said, you know what, we're just going to let this thing run its course and hope for herd immunity. And yeah, okay. And then we got the US, where uh, again, we're kind of a mix of some places taking it really seriously. And some places just saying, you know, whatever, it's spring break, let's go party. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so in terms of overall success, um, these are all failures. But you can judge the magnitude of the failure um, based on the height here. But there's another way to look at this as well. And so that is to go over here. So this is a thing called an excess deaths uh, graph. And so what they're doing is comparing the last couple of years of uh, uh, total death data, which tend to be pretty similar. They tend to be you know, right on top of each other, um, except occasionally you'll have a bad flu year like we had in uh, Germany uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and they are then comparing this year's death to that and correlating that with the, um, uh, the outbreak. And so down here you got Sweden with 5,700 excess deaths over last year, which matches fairly well with um, their uh, total case fatality rate uh, and uh, total number of cases that we know about. But the thing is you want to compare it to like for like, because Sweden is going to be getting most of its cases from cross-border, just like everybody else, but what's it connected to? Well, it uh, shares a very long border with Norway, and I think that's the comparison. So Norway took extreme measures and uh, shut this down. Um, the other place that's connected to Sweden more by, I would say, like culture and uh, a bit geography, although there's a bit of water in between, is going to be Denmark. And uh, you see they also uh, took strong precautions and, yeah, shut this down. Very few excess deaths. Um, yeah, over last year. Uh, so they, they managed to stop people from dying by stopping them from getting infected. And Sweden did the opposite. And yeah, there we go. That's the little pink curve. Now, the size of the excess death curve does help you to figure out roughly, you can kind of back calculate and uh, estimate how many cases there actually were um, originally based on the number of dead bodies. Uh, the idea being that dead bodies are easier to count than cases that you didn't test. Um, but yeah, so it's not a success by any, um, uh, any, any means of looking at success that I can see. Um, in Sweden, the numbers have gone down, but social distancing has also gone up to some extent. And also, all the countries around them are taking the right precautions to make sure that fewer cases are going to be coming in. And so they are benefiting from not herd immunity, but herd um, sensible precaution taking. And we need a much more uh, <laughs> herd mentality. Uh, yeah, but in a good way. I don't know. <laughs> we definitely need a better term for that. 
Um, so yeah, everybody else is doing the work and uh, it's like the ants and the grasshopper in that Aesop's fable. Uh, yeah, Sweden are the big fat grasshopper just sitting around playing the fiddle or whatever while the ants work away for the winter. And yeah, they're, they're suffering. They suffered because of it. And um, I would say the other problem is that Sweden does, did not ever achieve a high enough rate of infection. I mean, thank goodness, on the one hand, um, to qualify for this herd immunity. You've got to get to somewhere near 70% uh, of everyone actually infected around the same time for this to happen. And it turns out that not all people in Sweden are quite as silly as this one particular government minister, I would say, because a lot of people are still voluntarily staying away, staying home. Um, and unless you have a population where at least 70% of people are hell-bent on catching the virus, which may kill them and will probably physically damage them forever, even if it doesn't, then there is no possibility of, uh, you know, sort of a, a willful herd immunity going out and deliberately acquiring this. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what went on with Sweden. They, they messed up. Everybody else kind of bailed them out. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> they've managed to survive the winter thanks to the work of the ants, basically, uh, and not through any of their own planning or uh, cleverness. Um, and so, I don't know, it's, it's a bad situation and unfortunately it's going to, uh, there are going to be people that look at this and say, wow, why couldn't we have done that? You know, why couldn't we have made everybody else do the work and yeah, we reap the benefit and if we go that way, I think everything collapses. And so I, I'm really glad that things haven't gone in that direction so far. Uh, anyway, and there you can see the U.S. excess death curve right there, which is actually um, considerably higher than the U.S. death total from COVID, which tells you that the U.S. death total from COVID is almost certainly underreported, not overreported, because a lot more people have mysteriously died this year. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.